Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall. I, I have thought of a name for our episode. <laughs> please, please share. <laughs> uh, how to keep your employees employed for free. All right, that last word I really like. Free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so this won't cost me anything uh, yeah i don't think so i think most of what we've you know th- and this was your idea that you know we just provide people some thought starters for you know the big deal the big deal for for helping people be stuck to you retained to you and you were you were sharing that you had uh presented this to a client yesterday talking about you know what is it that keeps them around you could you share the, uh, yeah, we were talking about, uh, you know, we were talking about it, uh, it, it started with customers. So, so yeah. I'm sitting there in the, the, in the manager's office, customer calls in and, and the, the, the store had left a part off of their vehicle, uh, you know, decorative piece. And, and the manager's like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. I've got it right here. You can stop by anytime and pick it up. You know, and he hangs up the right. phone, and 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 I'm so they're like, no, 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 we we want we want this 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 customer to know that we care, yeah. and we know that a recovered customer is much more loyal than a customer that it just went well. So right. So you know, I, I my great coaching hat on. I said, so so what do customers buy? Right. And we finally figured out it was time and money. There it is. And so I said, well, so how do you how do you address those two? All right, money, money, money. When when this customer comes in. I'm going to give them $10 off their next visit. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. That's wonderful. What about time? Nothing. Not a, not a clue, right? No ideas. Yeah. Just searching his memory bank. And finally, I said, what if we took the part to the customer so they didn't have to come here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, they would think we were geniuses. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, they would be blown away. They might even tell their friends, right? Hey, you know, everybody makes mistakes, but these guys, you, you know, right. they truly care. Uh, yeah. They they want me to be happy. And then that led us into a conversation, kind of dovetailing our conversation about the great resignation. Because yeah. the, the same manager's telling me, my team is outstanding. I got four guys who were doing the work, when uh, the same work of when I had five guys. Mm. So because of teamwork and cooperation and engagement, these four yeah. guys are the bomb. And I'm like, fantastic. How are you going to keep them? Right. <laughs> How are right. you going to make sure that these four guys stay with you? Because in this market, four guys who are really good are getting phone calls. That's right. Yeah. People are going, hey, I heard you're doing a nice job down there. Why don't you come yep. over and do it for me uh, for a little more money? Uh, yep. That type of thing. Yep. Yep. And, and so uh, it's the same principles, right? I mean, we, we have to somehow show them that we care. We can tell them that we care, but showing them that we care seems to be a little more uh, uh, of, a, of a, a, a proof. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even sure uh, that we can tell them we care. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's the same as as telling people they can trust you. Yeah. <laughs> you can trust me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I care about you. Yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. oh man, I am running away. You know, yeah. <laughs> grab my wallet. I'm gonna run away. <laughs> right. Because because yeah, you, you. I don't. Yeah. You. This is one of those things that yeah, seeing is believing. Yeah, that, that's know? right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe more important, feeling is believing, right? I have this feeling that 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 they care. Yeah, but, which is only going to happen once they observe some things, once they once they experience some things. So obviously, we're we're big in in the modern age on customer experience and the employee experience, and so these are things that really uh, will engage them. So, without further ado, let's let's start talking about that list of show don't tell um of uh, ideas for showing that you care um and, and i think the the first one that um maybe we need to, this is almost like so big that it could be its own thing uh but i but i think we need to talk about it here is um i i know somebody cares when i know they know me 
So yeah. you somehow have to know your people. Um, I'll, I'll give an example of something that I've seen work, which is I've had managers over the years who just kind of keep a list, you know, um, a list of things that they know about their people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's things like uh, their service anniversary, maybe their birthday, uh, the names of their family members, uh, you know, hobbies, things that they do outside of the store, literally keeping track of those things. And, and the reason that they're doing it like that is, you know, I, I mean, if, if somebody's hearing this and saying, oh, how cold, you know, they don't know it in their heart, you know, they have to keep a list. No, 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 no. The point here is that they care enough to write it down so that they can remember and, and, uh, and, and you know, bring that to bear in the person's employment. Um, that is, that's special. I, my wife, frankly, is somebody who does that. There's a, there's a granola recipe in our kitchen. And my wife has handwritten a note. Uh, Mark really likes it when you add uh, sesame seeds to this recipe. Right. Now, she didn't tell me that. I stumbled across it in the kitchen one day. And guess who felt very cared for, right? That's my wife being really uh, loving to me. So don't think that writing it down somehow makes this insincere. Writing it down shows us that you're serious about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the sincerity is the extra effort that came from the writing it down and the extra effort that comes from referencing back to it. That's it. Uh, to make sure that, uh, yeah, you make things special. That's right. Uh, we had that, we had a uh, similar conversation, same manager. We we're, you know, the, you know, how are you going to keep these people? And, and I said, what are you currently doing? Right. We always want to talk about it. What are you doing? Well, and he says, all right. He says, if I know it's going to be a long day, he says, I'll, I'll, I'll go get breakfast sandwiches. I'll bring breakfast sandwiches in in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like that's fantastic. That shows you care. I said, how do you plus that up? Hmm. What if I brought in their favorite there breakfast you sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, that's my man. Yes. You know, that's, yeah, so I know you really, you, you hate bacon, but you like sausage. So I made sure I got, you know, bacon sandwiches and one sausage one, because I know that's your favorite. Perfect. Uh, you know, and, and there again, you might not even have to say it. Uh, the, just something simple like, uh, here's some sandwiches and, and I got you a sausage. Right, right, right. right. Just, just just let it go right, right. and, and the, the the message is is has been sent and and you can go so far with that at, uh, before we move on to the the next thought starter for our for our uh, audience uh, both of them uh the office is a great example of what this looks like played out the british office is really sarcastic and cynical and the american office follows that plot to a point and then you see it sort of take off and become its own thing and what is its own thing is the fact that michael scott the the awful uh ridiculous over the top uh horrible boss that they have becomes a human and right. and frankly so does every other person in the storyline they bring in all these foils and eventually you see something where they show that they're human one of the ways michael scott shows that he's human is that he um, knows things, super quirky things about his people. So there's an episode where Angela um, has a cat die. And when he finds out that a cat dies, he says, and I can't remember the name, but it's like, not sprinkles. Oh, this day is the worst. And he knows, you know, he knows. And, and they make a point, you know, the, the conceit of the show is that it's a documentary. So they show another member of, of the staff being interviewed saying, say what you will about Michael, but so-and-so would never have known the name of that cat you know right. like that, that's what that's what people remember so um you know michael scott could get away with a whole lot and still have a lot of staff loyalty frankly because he really did truly know his people and showed that he cared so know your people How, however you need to do it write things down do, do what you need to do but know your people Oh yeah, yeah, and and this manager it was it was interesting because as we talked about knowing your people and and doing things for them, right, right, whether you know you know what's going on in their families and things like that, they, you know the light bulb went on and he goes, I have to woo my employees. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, that's what, yes, that's a yeah. great way to put it, right? And so he he told me the story about 
uh, you know, he was dating this girl and this girl had shared with him a story about a book. And this book was, was one that her mom had given her years ago. She had it as a kid and she'd lost it somewhere along the, the, the yeah. line. All right. So he went out, he found the book and that was what he gave her for Christmas. Nice. You know, and he's like, he's like, that's, I, I was wooing. Right. And for you yeah. young people out there wooing, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just have to Google it. Right. And I think you, you understand by the story, what it means, but, but he's, he says, that's what I have to do for my people. I have to continually woo my people. Uh, yeah. Right. I have to, I have to listen. Right. And, and so we talked about, you know, you know, all right. So Christmas is coming up. You're probably going to give each of them a little something for Christmas. Yep. Yeah. I was planning on doing that. So now the question becomes, right can i make that something that's special to them yeah all right so you got one employee and he has a he's a mechanic he has a limited set of tools and he's always borrowing this specific tool from another employee or oh team. that's a good example yeah you know first of all it makes the other employees crazy right you know they they don't typically like loaning out their tools yeah and 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 how can you communicate to this person a you want to invest in them I right. want to buy you something that, that that will make you better at this job, and it, because right. I see you're you're going to be here for a long time, and I want you to be here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then how, how can I demonstrate that I was paying attention? That's and great. I've noticed you borrowed this tool multiple times. I wanted to get you your very own. That's great. That's like, great. That's exactly yeah. That's you know when they come in and they go, wow, you know I had the best meal at this restaurant. My wife and I, you know, we don't go there very often because you know it's expensive, but. Man, we just love that place. Hmm. All right. That guy doesn't get a tool. That guy gets a gift card to that right. restaurant. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so so just asking them to turn the radar up, right? Turn the right. radar up, start to listen, start, start to be more observant. Yep. And, and I love your idea of making notes. Yeah, make yeah. a note because a month from now, when I go to buy everybody a Christmas present, yeah, it, it will all have left me. <laughs> It, it will. And, and uh, to your point about wooing, I mean, it's, it's not something you stop doing, right? You don't stop wooing your spouse. You know, um, does, is that manipulative? It is not. It is showing them that you really are genuinely interested in them and their story and, and want to, you know, uh, you want to love them. You want to, you want to see them improve. So, right. well, and that led us to the next part of the conversation, which was, which was the coaching part. Yeah. Uh, right. That, that by sitting down with them one on one and, yeah. and, and providing them with the, the data that they don't have access to, and then sitting out and talking about what they're doing well and what, what their opportunities are and how yeah. they could, you know, become even more efficient, more effective yeah. and and make more money for their for themselves and for their families. That's caring. That's right. But, but just spending that time with them and helping them to develop and grow uh, is a wonderful act of caring. Yeah. And, and true coaching would involve follow up. So, you know, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, finding out where they're at and giving them what they need, asking them what they need, but also following up. Did you get it? Did it work? Are you, are you cool? Um, again, um, that takes some I hate to say this, but writing things down, I guess I'm a one trick pony today, but it's almost like you have to write some things down on a worksheet, put a reminder in your system to follow up with so-and-so 30 days later to see if it worked. There's, 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 it's almost like there's something to this writing things down thing. So um, I, I think that applies to everything we've talked about. Well, and I think I like the idea of the person who you're talking to writing it down yeah. And what I've started to do is, is I'll ask them to make notes, you know, using one of our coaching questions, right? Of everything right. we talked about, what was most important to you. Yeah. And then they make a note and then I ask them if, if I, I can make a copy of their notes so I can have one. Yeah, sure. And so now sure. we've both got literally, we're, we're literally on the same page. Yep. And when we sit down to talk again, we pull out the page and we say, all right, so how are you doing with this? Yeah. You know, you had wanted to, you had committed to, yep. you had a desire to, right? You're not, yep. it wasn't what I told you to do. It's what right. you wanted to do. And, and I'm helping you stay on track by, you know, by following up and asking. Yeah. That's care. Yeah. You'll notice that so far we've really just said two things, right? Um, you know, get to know people 
and then have conversations to help people. Um, in both cases, you're basically asking questions and you're probably writing something down so that you can do something with that information. Um, let, let's add one, one more item, Mike, and, and this is, it's going to sound like a subset, but it's such a big deal because, um, because it might take anything we've talked about a different direction just by itself. Um, you want to know what it is they really value. So don't just get to know them as people, but what are the things that they value? And, and you've already mentioned a couple of them, time and money. I mean, that's a, that's a customer-centric way of looking at it. Um, what about things like um, esteem? You know, do they, do they, do they value praise? Uh, what about things like uh, purpose? You know, do they do they value seeing their impact and being a part of something bigger than themselves, uh, whether at work or or, or even beyond that? Um, those are those are uh, again, you're not giving them a day off, you're not giving them a raise, you're recognizing them, or you're pointing some things out and and uh, drawing their attention to some things that are important to them. Um, it also would probably fine tune how you go about having those coaching conversations, right? Cause it's going to go a different direction with different kinds of people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Each, each conversation is going to be specific and hopefully hits upon what is it that that person values most. Right. Uh, something recently that's come up uh, and we may have to do a whole episode on it is, is that these younger people like to level up. Yep. Right. So, so every game they've ever played, you got to get to the next level. It's, it yep. started with, you know, with, with my generation, you're right. You're right. I want to get the next level of Pac-Man yep. right now. It's much more evolved. And so, and so showing people how they can level up. Yeah. Right. right? Defining the levels, right. Achievements. There's a, yeah. Apprentice level one, apprentice level two, you know, now, yep. you, now you're, 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 you're tech one, tech two, tech three, figure out, okay. How can I, how can we show progress towards a goal? And, yeah. and, and a lot of these young people value that. They, they'll they'll uh, stay up till three or four o'clock at night, playing that game, trying to get to the next level. That's right. <laughs> Knowing they're missing out on sleep uh, because that's something they value is this continual improvement kind of thing, yeah. type of thing. I, I knew I was getting old when uh, I, it, it was already happening when I was getting out of college, but you know, suddenly these game systems had achievements and I even knew a bunch of people that called them Chivos. And I've never been able to get that out of my head. Like, you know, the right. gamification of America. Get some Chivos. Yeah, we need Chivos. And while whether you're for it or against it, the reality of it, it's here. Your young right. people are, are excited about it. So yeah, you're probably going to have to get on board. I, I, you're 100% right. Uh, and and you know, r related to this, um, there, there are different achievements that matter to different people. Um, disc, we, you know, we, we have, we, we can't get out of this conversation without talking disc. Uh, disc is a, a very old um, uh, system for uh, describing the differences between people's communication styles and uh, sort of where their energy goes, if you will. Um, originally developed in the 20s as a scientific instrument, but it goes back literally thousands of years. You can, you can look to you know, the ancient Greeks' uh, medical uh, understandings to, to see uh, the beginnings of it, uh, because we've been describing four basic personality types since then, uh, four basic communication styles, personality types, um, so something along those lines. So um, we're probably going to end up doing future episodes on disc because it's, it's just so handy and, and it's something that you can have in your head a couple questions that will help you identify where this person probably leans toward uh, what, they, what they orient or naturally gravitate to uh, for themselves. And uh, again, part and parcel to everything we've talked about, it's a way to show you care, right? Because you want to know sort of what, you know, what are the things that, um, that, that they use in their life, uh, motivations, fears, et cetera, uh, that, that are how they orient their life. You're getting to know them in yet another way. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's the, the whole point of this is, yeah, can I better understand the people around me? And, and adapt to, you know, their preferred, you know, communication and adapt. styles. Right. And the, it's the adaptation that is the caring. 
there it is. Uh, yeah, I know this is how you like to communicate. I'm going to talk to you in that that manner. And and, and A, it, it helps the communication and B, it, it demonstrates that I care. Okay, so we've really said three things then, Mike, it, just to summarize here. Um, spend time getting to know them, uh, spend time developing them, and spend time uh, adapting to them. In all three cases, you're showing them that you really know them. And in all three cases, I think you're probably writing something down so that you can do something with, uh, you know, the, 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 the insights and ahas that you have or they have. Um, so, I, I, you know, it, this is maybe just sounds a little too, uh, you know, wrapped up with a bow and, and all nice and pat. But the reality is that there are a million ways that this could play out. And we would really encourage you, uh, listeners, both of you. Uh, to have some sort of uh, brainstorming session for yourself of what would it look like for you? You know, would it be bringing in those sausage biscuits in the morning? Uh, you know, would it be, uh, you know, uh, tracking, uh, you know, their their disc profile uh, and, and using it throughout the week, figuring out some way to go uh, intentionally approach them and have a conversation with them about it? Would it be keeping a spreadsheet of all the things you know about? It? That's for you to decide, uh, but we'd love to hear your ideas so please send us your thoughts on that oh definitely definitely yeah and and the, the i think we 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 sum the whole thing up with uh go woo your your employees i love it <laughs> yeah we need some wooing out there people in a very hr friendly way yes speaking exactly. of hr friendly <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh mr john wolf our yes. beloved announcer it's time for him to talk. Oh, uh, I really like this part. <laughs> and that's it. Join us next time when you'll hear Mike say, well, I'm sure he'll say something pithy. Don't miss it. Next time, it doesn't take a genius. That's good enough.